Let's 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 throw, let's throw a little bit of Rome in there. Was there like a, a war conflict with Rome during their collapse? There was, right? Or was yeah, it Ju barbarians? Julius Caesar, and you might know even more about this, John, is, yeah. was uh, leading his troops up north, and he basically conquered all of Gaul. He was returning right. as like the hero of Gaul, and they were going to try and get him on political charges and put him that's away. Right. That, that's right. So so what happened? So what started happening in the Roman Republic is, is that is that. Um, so when you were in Rome as a leader, uh, you were you were immune uh, to kind of lawfare. Uh, you were not allowed to you know do this thing where you just bring like lawsuits and lawsuits and lawsuits. Every, um, um, but if you but but once you were out of uh, power, you know then then they could do that to you, and they started to do that. Um, and uh, you know Julius Caesar being seen as the threat uh, that he was. Um, and you know, being outside of, of Roman territory, and at that point, being a military leader, not um, uh, a tribune or, or anything like that, he, he was he, like he, you know, he had the classic choice to make as to whether to cross the Rubicon with his army, um, <laughs> and, and 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 he made that choice because you know he was he was facing, you know, he was facing political and probably physical extermination, or he was going to win. He was going to win, or he was going to lose. That was the thing about uh, threatening to impeach and use political things to go after your political opponents that eventually one of them is going to snap and that's what caesar did he crossed the rubicon which is basically the the was it a wall or something no, it's a river it's uh, a it's river a little, a, i think it's more of a stream than a river but it's a very famous <laughs> it, stream. It, it's like um it protects it, it borders rome and it's symbolically you are not allowed to bring military troops beyond that, the rubicon that's, that's correct that violates roman so but he did it he was like you know what it's either either i don't and they arrest me and they that's destroy right. me or i take control of the city that, no, that, that's right and, and look that's look, at a certain at a certain at a certain point when uh you know tyranny becomes extreme enough um it, it creates the the, the, con the the conditions you know for certain things to happen um, what, if, what if we're in the calm before the storm a lot of people thought that 2020 was the time at which trump was facing all these charges so would he cross the rubicon the left is trying to claim that he did with january 6th but he clearly did not but what if 2024 is when you know because maybe trump said look we're gonna run again We'll run in 2024 and we'll win. We're going to win back the house. We're going to run again. We'll win. But what if what happens if something happens and Trump doesn't win? We have I think social media. Mm -hmm. You can't take the capital. That doesn't exist anymore. I like know, our that's government ridiculous. is decentralized now, so there's no place to march troops into. It would have to be like some organized digital cyber. Uh, you no, you'd, you'd, you'd have to uh, shut down all, all communications. Take over. Yeah, it'd be crazy. The chain of command organized thing. I. What do you think? I can I, I think, not well, see look, one guy doing that well, right now. I, it's cer certainly 2024 is, I mean, we, you know, we used to say that 2016 was going to be one of the most important elections ever, and then 2020 was going to be one of the most important elections ever. 2024 is going to be extremely, uh, extremely uh, high stakes. Um, I, I, I happen to believe that, and I, I, I like Donald Trump. I'm a, I'm a big, big Trump fan. I hope a, a, that he runs again. I think he has unfinished business, and I think he can turn the country around. I personally believe he is going to win by such a, a massive margin in 2024 that, you know, we're not going to have um, issues. And I pray that that's I, the I, case. I, I agree. I agree. At least for now. We'll see. It's very, very early on. It is. We're in one of the worst years for political uh, uh, shows. So this, this is for everybody you can understand. Um, I, I tell people, like, the year after the presidential election, it's just like your lowest traffic, lowest ad rates. It's br brutal. Then you get the midterm, which everything improves. Then you get the the, the, the campaign, the, the primary year for the presidential in 2023. So then it's like everything picks back up. And boy, our election year is great for political content. But we're in that in that lull. So we have so much. I, I think you're going to have a, I think you're going to have a really good 2024. I don't uh, think. For I, your, I, well, for your show. For, no, your, I, for I'm viewers. Not, I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced. I think. People need to understand that 2016 was insane. How insane it was. I was in San Jose and I watched this mob outside of Trump rally chase down some 16 year old kid I attacking that. him. Yeah. I saw a guy who got punched in the mouth because someone said he was a Trump supporter, but he was actually a Bernie supporter. I watched them shove an, old, an elderly couple in their late 60s to the ground, grab their MAGA hats and set them on fire cheering. I watched a guy walking out going, yay, Trump. And a guy runs up with a bag and whacks him in the head with it. I filmed this video, gets a million mm -hmm. views in a day. That was, I think, 2015. Yeah. That's how insane things were. Then we get 2020. Look at what happened with January 6th. At the very least, a riot at the Capitol. Insane. And I keep telling people, I see no reason for this to de-escalate. Now you're getting the brunt of the, of, the, of the federal government going after Trump supporters. Do you think people are sitting there just being like, well, it sucks, but I'm going to calm down? Or do you think they're being like, stop and leave me alone? Now, I'll tell you, my, the funniest smear against me, the SPLC, posted this tweet of mine where I said something like, 
I think we've passed the point of no return. The bridge has been, the, the nation has been so divided, we can never go back and civil war seems inevitable. And I was quoting a, a story. I was actually quote tweeting somebody. And the story said that like far right groups wear t-shirts calling for a second civil war. So basically I'm like, the news reported these far right groups are driving around demanding civil war. And I'm like, feels like a civil war is going to happen. And they criticize me for it as if it was my idea. Listen, it's gotten so insane in this country. It's bad. And right now we're in this lull year. Mm -hmm. So it feels like everything's maybe chilled a little bit. But look what they're doing with the, with the one six commission. Look what they're doing with setting up Capitol Police offices. When we get in the midterms and the Republicans are looking like they're going to win, the Democrats are going to start ripping their hair out and banging their faces on the wall, screaming at the top of their lungs. 2023, when Trump gets back up on stage and says, ladies and gentlemen, I am running for president one more time. And everyone goes, ah! and screams cheering and they're throwing drinks in the air, whatever. The Democrats will start pulling their hair out again. It is going to be worse than we saw in 2016. It is going to be worse than we saw in 2020. I'm not entirely, I'm saying these things to be pessimistic. I'm saying there's going to be a conflict. Understand why. Maybe it will be like the scale of conflict. We don't know, but come on. I, had, I, I love this. I, I've talked about the potential for civil war. There's been a bunch of studies some uh, national security experts, there was a story, I think it was in the Atlantic, said that they estimated between 35 and, and like 95% chance of a civil war in the United States. And I thought that was insane. <laughs> it's like the, one to 99% chance. No, no, no. It was because, war. because there was uh, uh, like 16 people interviewed, there was a wide range of what they thought. But the average was something like 65 to 70%. So then I, I have people say to me, they're like, so Tim, remember last year when you were saying that, you, that, that we were headed towards a civil war? Yeah, what happened with that? And I'm like, a bunch of people rioted at the Capitol and they go, oh, I'm like, did you think that things calmed down since then? So a few years ago when I was like, man, if this stuff keeps happening, it's going to get worse. Now we've got the one six stuff going on. They're going after all these people. Do you think that when they go after that little old granny where they, the cop holds the door open for her and threatens her? Or how about when the feds went to that Alaska woman's house and kicked her door yeah, or whatever? Wrong, is the wrong person. Wrong person. Yeah. Do you think regular people are sitting back like, this is fine? Or do you think people are being antagonized to the point where their brains are going to explode? You made me think of that meme with a dog sitting in the house right. on fire going, this is fine. <laughs> yeah, I, yep. I, 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 t I totally agree uh, that the level of intensity is being ratcheted up, uh, you know, to, to, you know, to a very dangerous extent. And I agree that it will continue uh, to do so in, in the current course that we're on um, until uh, 2024. So, so I, no, I, I, I totally agree with you that we're going to see, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to see. We're going to see the same kind of and probably more conflict during the election uh, than we did in 2016 and, and 2020. Yep. I, I just believe and I hope and I pray that, you know, Trump wins by such a margin um, that, you know, it kind of puts everything, uh, you know, a 49 state landslide. Hey, I, I really I really <laughs> think it could be I really think it could be big. I, I, I think that, you know, like you said, like you, I think you just said, I mean, regular. <laughs> I think the left t t terribly underestimates regular Americans. And I think when they think that they have an advantage, they press it and they overreach uh, very much. But I I've heard a lot. There's been a lot of historical comparisons. So I obviously we're talking about Rome and crossing the Rubicon. But I mean, are there really that many similarities or is it just like a few things that people like to, to reference? Right. You, 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 you talked about you mean, lawfare. You talk about. Oh, uh, oh, oh, no. Oh, look, I, I mean, I, I think it's. Uh, I forget who it is. I mean, one of my my second or third favorite podcaster after you, uh, Dan Carlin, has a podcast named oh, yeah. uh, Hardcore History, um, and it's really you know amazing. Um, and and uh, and he's you know big series on Rome, big series on Genghis Khan that he calls him that I love, and Alexander the Great, who I'm a huge um, fan of. But he's fond of saying that you know I mean history doesn't necessarily repeat, but it rhymes. Um, and, and it rhymes because human nature, you know, is, is eternal. Um, and, you know, there are trends and forces that change. Uh, you know, there, there are individuals that, that, that rise to, to uh, significance who have such a force of nature that they can, you know, alter things. So, you know, um, you, you, you can't say, hey, we're exactly in a situation that uh, the Roman Republic is in and we're heading the exact same direction and outcome. Um, but, but there are there are definite, definite uh, similarities uh, for sure that we that, that we should that we should draw lessons from, you know, yeah. and, and try and try to avoid, you know, certain. A lot, a lot of people have likened it to Weimar Germany. Yeah, some people have likened Reichstag. it, but some people have likened it to um, the Spanish Civil War. 
I, I th- look. I think. I think the 1930s uh, uh, comparison to you know uh, to the to the threat of, of the Third Reich is, is very apt in, in the following sense, which is um, you know, and people are talking about this. Some of them, uh, but I don't think enough are. But, but I, I think that I think that the Chinese Communist Party is 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 an existentially uh, dangerous threat to us and to freedom in the world right now. I don't think we're paying enough attention to it. I don't think we've been serious enough about it. I think we need to completely decouple from China and we need to to isolate to isolate them. Uh, and be in be building in a sort of an alliance of liberty uh, that Steve Bannon, one of my other favorite podcasters, likes to say with you know nations like Japan and, and um, uh, India and um, Australia, and we need to be um, preparing for things with respect to that. One of the things about the German, uh, how it reminds me of Weimar Germany, is the burning of the Reichstag, which happened right after Hitler got into power. I think it was 1933. Uh, the the building, the Capitol Parliament building, burned down. And he blamed the that communists. Was, yeah, that was a false. Yeah. That was a false flag. Event. Apparently, no one's yeah. been well, able to prove. Right. And they've done the math, and they're like, "There's no way one guy could light the whole building on but fire." But it's an American the conspiracy that, theory. So theories have arrived that he burned his own Reichstag down, and then used that as a reason to lock down the entire country, was, and start stripping them of their civil rights. What was, what was the, the 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 special security bill that was passed because of that? The it, uh, the. Um, what? Appeasement Act? Is that what it's? No, no. The um, the the, the um, an act that was passed in Germany. Yeah. I I the, the uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Starts with an A. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the tip of my tongue. I don't know the answer. Abling Act. Yep. The was enable, enabling, the, the act. enabling Act. The Enabling Act. That's what it was. Go. Ah, it was so close. <laughs> it with an very I'm like Abling. Enabling Act. Mm. The Enabling Act. What a yeah, nice that was, benign name. Yeah, sounds good. That was his excuse. He's like, we need more power. We need to start arresting people, and uh, we're watching similar things. And it's now, so like you said, doesn't it doesn't it doesn't repeat. It rhymes. A lot of people come out and they're like, oh, Nazi Germany. I'm like, look, it's going to be different, but it's going to be similar in a lot of ways. What are we saying? We have an ideological faction demands purity. They are racial identitarians. They want law based on race and they're indoctrinating children. A lot of similarities there. And then right? one six, you've got, I don't even like saying one six makes it sound like nine eleven, uh-huh. but like this, this thing, I don't know that it was a false flag. I've heard that there were police officers involved with letting people into the building. That's a fact. That's a fact. That is, yes. a, that is a fact. Yeah. So that, is, that is a fact. I, they, I, have, I, have one, I have one client named Alan Hostetter, uh, you know, uh, former police chief from Orange County, and uh, he might be someone you want to have on a show someday to, to talk all about this because he's happy to talk all about it. But, you know, he, he, he is an individual, um, you know, who, who seems to have had uh, federal, federal, federal agents uh, around him for a long time um, leading up to January 6th. Um, and so, you know, there's, they're just, there's serious, serious there's, questions. There's numerous videos yep. where the police open the door to allow people in. In one video, a cop they, says, they, they were, they were, ur- they were urging people. Yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. they were letting people in. Sometimes they were urging. Cops people are taking selfies in. with people. Mm-hmm. They're like, Hey, in one video, a cop says, don't agree with it, but I agree with your right to protest as people walk past them waving. So it could have been just mass disorganization, or it could have been intentionally like, hey, we can use this as an excuse to impose a lockdown. I think y'all are missing the bigger picture. The police were in on it. Each and every one of those Capitol Police officers were like, we're going to let all of our Trump MAGA friends in the building. (laughs) So each and every one of these cops, why aren't they being investigated? Why aren't they being indicted? So, so I, so I will tell you, um, we're going to put a lot of uh, Capitol Police officers uh, on the witness stand when we try these cases. Um, Why did you open the door for these people? That's a pretty good cross examination question, yeah. too. Yeah, it really is. The jury hear that question. What's it going to say? Here's a video of you opening the door and letting them in. I wanted to avert Why'd a you riot. Do it? That's what I would have said. I wanted to avert a riot, so I let them in, so they didn't s- smash me up. Okay, at the gate. is it trespassing? Not if I let them in. Haven't you seen the episode of Simpsons? Where I think it's Wiggum or someone tells Homer that if someone enters your property, you can kill him. And he goes, hey, Flanders. <laughs> and then he goes, it doesn't work if you invite him in. He's like, oh, right. What if you, <laughs> that, what if that, you that does create a, a, an analytical legal problem? For, what if you for the <laughs> what if you invite them yeah. in under duress? What does that mean? Meaning that you fear for your life. So you let them pass. Like. Someone, you're, you're like you're like three levels into the movie Inception. On that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm so the cop, and it's there's not a video. that I'm like, on, hey, on, come on, over on. here and go in. I'm like, uh, these if, people are gonna break me up. If so. someone is in the front of your building and they have like weapons and they're threatening you, and so you're scared and you open your door, then I understand. In these videos, quite literally, it's a bunch of old people doting about, waving little American flags, and the police just open the door up. Stand aside and say, don't agree with it, but agree with your right to protest as oh. people walk in. There's another video where the cop literally just opens the door and one cop poses for a selfie with people. Like, dude, you're not going to tell me that's duress. Now, I think those cops got in trouble, right? The selfie cops? I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, yeah. I, I do know there's another video that just came out that, that, that appear, appears to show uh, folks 
sort of frantically changing into um, you know different attire sort of yeah. under trees. Um, yep, you know, I've seen that. I've seen that. There's a video where one of the first breaches in the building, they were all in black clad you know, blackout gear to obscure who they were and their identities. And that's not a typical thing of, uh, uh, of Trump supporters. Uh, that certainly is not. Um, but, but there were a bunch of, a bunch of Trump supporters who said they were going to dress like Antifa. So the, the key, the key thing is, and, and again, um, you know, I have to discipline myself to be careful about talking about the merits of these cases. But I mean, the, the important thing is, uh, where's, where's the video? Where, where, where's the fourteen? Where's the fourteen thousand or fifteen thousand hours of video? Now, now, to, to be fair, um, you know the the Department of Justice and the prosecutors, uh, you know, say, and I, I I believe that they are in the process of setting up sort of a massive uh, sort of database in the cloud that will have all that video that will allow defense counsel, um, you know, to 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 search through it. Um, that uh, is still going to take a long time to get set up, and it's going to take a massive amount of time to review um, all of that because we re- we need to review all of it to, to understand, um, you know, what, what happened that, that day. Um, I also believe we should be seeing some video from before and after, um, yeah. that day. I mean, you know, wh- wh- why is it just relevant? Um, you know, what, 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 sh- what the video shows for January 6th, um, January 5th and January 7th. I, I think it's important to point out there were violent people, lots of them. And there's a lot of video that are, that's, that's ridiculous. There are people from the barricades out storming up and, and ramming police. We had uh, Richie McGinnis, I think. <laughs> this guy's everywhere. Huh. Was actually really is, yeah. squeezed in between rioters shoving against these cops and one cop's like screaming as he's being crushed. So all that stuff definitely happened. Now, the problem is the Democrats on the left show that and they say, look, 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 look. And I think it is part, partially a problem that many on the right are just like showing the cops opening doors. Let's talk about all of it. They were bad. There were there were people there engaged in very bad activities, right? But there are a lot of people who are being charged when they were essentially welcomed into the building, confused and understanding what was going on. Uh, th- that that is just a- that is just accurate what you just said. Um, and, and and you know very interestingly, uh, and I'm I, I'm not a fan of FBI Director Christopher Ray. I mean, when Christopher Ray was asked, uh, you know, questions by I forget which Republican congressman it was, and asked, um, hey, um, constituents in my district are wondering about these people who were you know uh, ushered into the building, and uh, that they're being um, charged. You know, how many people are there like that? And, you know, in classic uh, Christopher Ray fashion, you know, he dodged and ducked and prevaricated and simply would not would just, just simply would not go there and, yeah. and would not even remotely answer the question. Because it's political. It's for power. Never let a good crisis go to waste. That, that, that is one of the tried and true uh, tactics of all time with respect now, to taking over. No, I don't I don't think the riot is on par with like the burning of, you know, the Reichstag or whatever. Nothing really got destroyed, did it? I, they burned down the building, didn't they? No, no. In. Uh, on January sixth, there was some there was some actual historical uh, artifacts that took some damage when they when windows got broken in. Yeah, there they, was like an old bookshelf or something. They burned the entire Reich shack. I don't think anyone died. During yeah, that. so so it, it doesn't does, it doesn't really matter though because there was something symbolically destroyed. Uh, uh, it, it was the the normal process by which they certified the electoral votes. So that process is shocking to people. It wasn't a physical destruction. It was more of a metaphysical, you know, Oh, they abstract. interrupted the process, yeah. Yeah, and so it feels like an attack on the, on the, on the, on the uh, structures of yes. the country is, yeah, you know, abstract. There's, there's, there's actually an interesting legal issue on that front, which we've filed, you know, some motions on um, in our cases, which is that it is actually unclear um, under the existing case law um, as to whether or not, uh, you know, that process that day, the, the, the certification of the electoral votes actually qualifies as um, te- legally and technically an official proceeding as that is interpreted under the case law, because because those have to have a, a sort of a quasi uh, judicial um, function to them that, that it can be argued um, did not exist that day. Now that that is unsettled. I mean, the, the courts will decide, um, yeah. decide that. Um, but look, I but I but I really believe and, I, and I've, I've said many times, I think the institutions that really fell down in all of this, so to speak, are the state legislatures, especially including uh, GOP controlled state legislatures, because yeah. there's a, there's a the, the Constitution's designed to avoid something like this. And it's, it's very clear. Um, if there are questions about if there are any questions, the um, uh, the state legislatures you know can and should uh, n- not on January 6th. We're talking about back in like, you know, December when the Electoral College meets in the states. They are allowed to very clearly under the Constitution uh, simply not uh, send elector or a slate of electors uh, because they feel there are questions. If that occurs, and if either candidate, if no candidate gets 270 electoral votes, it goes to the House House under the 12th Amendment, where each state delegation gets one vote, and there is 
the process. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to timcast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.